So in order to make this possible and really put yourself in the right frame of mind, I'm going to tell you that every one of us has to learn how to learn correctly. Now, what I mean by learn how to learn correctly, let's talk about that word. How many of you have ever taken a course on learning? About four people. Okay. Now, we've all been told we're supposed to learn, but most of us do not know how to learn. I was reading a book years back, and I shared this with some of my students recently, called The Elusive Obvious. What a great name for a book. The Elusive Obvious. Okay? And it's amazing is it's as elusive the obvious. And inside the book, it says that the majority of us have what's called a seven-year-old personal education. What I mean by a seven-year-old personal education is when you're seven years old, like, I mean, I'm going to tell you, my little Maya, she's 18 months old, and she knows what she likes and she doesn't like. She likes to wear my shoes around the house. Okay? She likes certain foods. What she doesn't like, it's very obvious. She goes like this, and it goes where? On the floor. She doesn't want it anymore. She knows what tastes good, what feels good, what works. And until she turns about seven years old, the whole purpose of her life is to find out what she likes, what she doesn't like, to have fun, what turns her on, what gets her excited, what makes her move, what, what really gets her going. And sometime around seven years old, it's almost like a tractor beam back in the day with like, you know, Star Trek. And they grab a hold of you and they stop giving you a personal education. They start giving you what's called a social education. Here's how to act. Here's what to do. Here's what works. Here's how to change a tire. Here's how to turn a light bulb on. Here's how to do this. And you memorize all this stuff, but you spend the majority of your life learning things instead of learning how you operate. I said to a bunch of students recently, I said, can you give me a, a diagram on how to change a tire? Could you give me four pages? Average person could write four pages, draw some diagrams, write down some words, do it. And they make a whole thing, four pages, double space, diagrams. I said, okay, now, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Give me four pages with diagrams on how to make yourself happy. And they go, is the sentence enough? And typically, the things they wrote down required other people. It required everything that was outside of this box. Or maybe they'd give the little answer like, all I need is just my family, and I'm happy. Trust me, spend 10 days straight with your family in one small room, and you'll need to find other things to make you what? Happy. Okay, I'm not saying they make you unhappy, but you're going to need a little bit of what? Space. You're going to need to move away. So it's not just that. The majority of us can do very, very complex things, but it's simplistic things that really are causing the issues in our life. So my challenge for you here today is to really, really challenge yourself while you're here to come up with some of the answers you're looking for. Now, what I mean by the answers you're looking for is if you're stuck in certain areas of your life and you want to find out what that next step is, you can hold it inside of you, wait for the answer, let me give you an answer, hope you're going to use the answer and leave here and still do the same thing that you're doing now. Because I'm going to tell you, the majority of you haven't understood a very basic thing. The real event begins the second you walk out those doors. How many of you understand that you could get excited here and still do nothing? How many of you realize you could jump up and down here and say, this is great, and still do what? Nothing, because that's what we've done up till now. So I'm going to tell all of you a very simple thing. If you want to get the most out of this, here are the next things I say very, very clearly, and then i got to move rapidly fast, because I was thinking I was in the same room here the other day, and that event was 60 hours. I only have two tonight. So i got to move very, very quickly to get you guys the information that you need. So the first thing that I'm going to ask you to do to get the most out of this is really to really truly ask yourself this question. Do I want my life to work better than it currently does? Now, any of you that say no, you lie about other things too. Any of you that say everything's perfect, haven't been to the mall lately. Everybody who ever thinks everything is perfect, haven't seen somebody with a better relationship than you have that you could learn from. Everybody who thinks what well, um, everything's perfect, haven't thought that if you can get your energy going and live a few more days or whatever it is, haven't thought about that recently. So I'm going to ask you, the first question is, I'm going to ask you to get honest with yourself and ask yourself this question. Does your life work to the level that you truly desire it to work? Meaning, are you doing all you want to be doing? Are you giving it all? Because I realize most of us are really waiting for the man or the woman on the white horse to come along. And you can't wait for them to show up. I was, reading, I was listening to an old Earl Nightingale tape. He talked about this. And he said, you're waiting and waiting and waiting for that to show up. Because when that horse shows up, then I'll give everything I have inside of me. When that opportunity shows up, then I will have the confidence I need. 
When that white horse shows up, then I'll get to the gym the way I want, eat what I should eat, do what I should do, finally bake those cookies I've been dying to give the neighbor because they were so nice to me years ago. But what's amazing is most of us are waiting for that person to come or that thing to happen before we get started. I call it living in the one-day mentality. And the challenge with the one-day mentality is what most of us do. See, I told you most of what I share with you today is going to be common sense. But common sense isn't common practice. I see people here that work at our office. And I, every day I see people with their Starbucks. They complain about money with the Starbucks in their hands. What's amazing is those cost $5. Two a day, 10 bucks a day, five a week, 50 bucks a week. Give it to any investors in this room, you could turn that into something. Within a few years, you got a down payment on a small house. But what's amazing is we complain about not having money and we go to Starbucks. We complain about not being in good shape and what do we do? We go to Starbucks. We complain about not having energy and we go to Starbucks and the only reason you need to go to Starbucks is not because you like coffee, is because your body doesn't work right and you don't have the ability to have energy you need in the morning and the reason you need caffeine is because you're not living the life you want. You're dragging all your memories and emotions that you shouldn't be dragging. Why do you need coffee? You don't have enough energy.